Hello and welcome everyone. I am Blue Jay, and this is the first installment of my War Dragons Atlas 102 training series. And today we are going to be discussing in a little bit further detail Primarchs and Glory. And we discussed these a little bit in the 101 series, but we're going to go into a little bit more detail today. And one of the big questions that I get asked a lot especially by players on my team and by players that I talk to frequently is what Primark should I research? And the easy answer to that is you're going to want to research them all eventually, but as far as being able to use them, you may not be able to properly use them yet until you're at a certain level in the game. Um, there are certain Primarchs that do work better when you are a higher level and some Primarchs that work great no matter what level you're at. And what you're going to do is you're going to open the army menu and you can either click on the research tree or click on one of the summoning slots. And this menu will pop up. This is the research tree. And the first Primarch everyone starts out with is a level 2 fighter. And the fighter is a great Primark as far as all around. It's going to be able to get you the glory you need to get it to level 5 and retire it. Once it's at level 5, you never want to summon your fighter again. What you want to do is you want to research the other Primarks that are available in the Bronze 2-star category. Which starts out with the Trapper. And the Trapper is what's known as a control primark it's got the highest defense power in the game per level and it also has this special ability to when if you're at if you move to a castle where there's another primark there you can trap that primark and force it to attack you trapping that primark also cancels out its special ability should it have one like the taunter or the seizure so the trapper is one that every player should get even at low levels this is a very effective primark to use one thing i will say is that you do need a significant number of troops on it because just carrying the minimum of what you need to lose to trigger max glory isn't going to give you the maximum trap time or even a decent trapping time. So with the trappers, you kind of want to carry at least 5,000 troops on them. Moving down, the next one is the defense category, which is the taunter. And these have a very special ability to when, when you summon these taunters, a taunter and have it placed at one of your team's castles if somebody comes to that castle trying to attack your team or your castle they're forced to attack you before they and wipe you out before they attack anyone else and basically they have to attack you until you have less troops than they do if they have more troops than your taunter has they can hit around you so that's an important thing to keep in mind. And if your taunter gets trapped, they can also hit around you. Which I will go over a little bit later in the video. But big thing to remember is with the taunter, it's really only effective with players that are higher level. So if you're the highest level on your team, you probably want to get that taunter just so that you can guard the other players on your team a little bit better. And with the Taunter, you want everybody kind of donating troops to that so that it can have a lot of troops on it when it comes to a battle at your castle. Now the next one down is the Destroyer, which is known as a balanced category. And its attack power and defense power are pretty much even throughout leveling. And it's a great Primark to have for any level. It doesn't have any special ability to it. It's just the evolved version of your fighter. But it is really effective for getting glory because that attack power is decently high and it's got a decent defense power. 
you're able to go up against a bunch of different Primarchs and be fairly effective. The Destroyer is effective against most Primarchs. And same thing with this next one, the Seizure, which is known as your attack category. And it has the highest attack power in the game per level. So it is very effective against both the Trapper and it's effective against the Trapper, the Taunter, and the Destroyer. It's not really effective against another Sieger because the defense powers are so low. And when your attack power over, it, when your attack power is so far over your opponent's defense power, it triggers a modifier that causes you to kill less troops, so you don't get max glory. So with the Sieger, you definitely want to keep to the other three Primarchs and not attack other Siegers. But another big thing about the Sieger is whenever it's at a castle, it weakens the troops at that castle. So it's great when you're going in for castle raids. Now, one of the things that just popped up on the screen is a little note. When you're hunting for glory, you want to always make sure that you get max glory and the best way to do that is to only attack Primarchs and players that fall within your 100% glory range and that varies as you move up in level um, and the other thing you want to look at is you want to make sure that the Primarch that you're hitting has a defense power that's either close to or equal to your Primarch's attach, attack power. Like I was saying before, you don't want to attack somebody that has a defense power that's way lower because there's a protection built into the game for that. But if your attack power and defense power are equal or just about equal, you will get max glory. It's the best way to kill as many troops as possible and get that two to one ratio of lost troops being one and killed troops being true two. So every one troop you lose kills two troops on your opponent, which is the main goal of every battle. If you're not doing that, you're not triggering max glory and you're not using your troops efficiently. So big thing to keep in mind is making sure that your attack power matches up and that you're always hitting a player in your max glory range um, and that you can kill them in one dragon. That's another big thing is that you want to five flame that base. So if you can get back up to help you, that's great. But if you can kill them by yourself with one dragon, even better. Now, another thing is the troop load. And the troop load will affect the amount of glory you get because you need to lose a certain amount of troops to get your max glory. And you also need to kill a certain amount of troops to get your max glory. And those numbers are up on the screen right now. For your fighter, it's 2.5 thousand troops that you want to carry and 5,000 troops on your opponent that you want to kill. And with the bronze two-star Primarchs, the Taunter, Trapper, Sieger, and Destroyer, you want to be carrying 3,500 troops and you want to find a target with 7,500 troops. And with the silver, you want to be carrying 12.5 thousand and you're going to want to kill off 25,000. So I've brought us back to Allegain right now and this is the same run that I did in the 101 series but I'm going to go over a little bit slower right now. And anytime you move to a red zone before you get there you want to look through this list of Primarchs that are at the castle. And you want to find one that has at least, like right now I'm dealing with bronze, so you want that 2.5, or you want that 7.5 thousand troops, you want it in 100% glory, and you want to be able to kill it in one dragon, which I can with this guy here. And I'm going to show you that. Now, while this is running, I will say that 
the red zones and glory holes are really not the most reliable way to get max glory. They are a very easy way to get glory, but it's not always going to be the most efficient use of your troops. Best way to do that is to either set up a glory swap with a friend from another team or to go to a castle, which is the next thing I'll show you. But you can see here right now that I only got about 3.7 thousand glory for that attack, which isn't horrible, but it's not great. So right now I'm at a castle, and again, it's the same one I showed you in the 101 clip, but you can see here, when I click on the Primarch list and I click on the enemy team, that the Primarch that I'm going to be attacking is a much more reliable target for getting max glory because I can kill him in one dragon. He's carrying more than 7.5 thousand troops and is within my 100% glory range. And as you can see, as this attack runs at the end of it, you'll see that I get a much better glory percentage or much better glory points for the amount of troops that were lost in this attack. And again, with all Atlas attacks, if you can bring backup, it's always a good thing to have because you never know when somebody's going to be defending. So always best to have backup, and even if you can kill it in one, you can swap out, let your backup kill it, and at least get some XP. They won't necessarily get glory, but they will get XP. And as you can see here, I got 5.6k glory compared to the 3.7k that I got last time for the same number of troops killed. Well, same number of troops lost on my side. I was able to kill more troops because there weren't a bunch of other players attacking the same Primarch at the same time. Now, once you get glory, you can actually level up your Primarchs and make them better. And to do that, you're going to need gold and diamonds. And if you caught that real quick, I have some gold and diamonds saved up. I'm going to click on the Primark and click on Train. And this is my Trapper that I'm leveling up. And when you click on Train, it's going to open up the Research Tree. And as you can see here, I've got enough glory, but I don't have enough diamonds. But, or I don't have enough gold but I'm still going to level up because I've got some diamonds saved up so when I click on level up what's gonna happen is this pops up and it's gonna ask me if I want to spend the diamonds that I have saved up to cover the gold that I don't have and I'm gonna click yes and what that's gonna do is that's gonna start leveling up that Primark and as your Primarchs level up they get a higher defense and higher attack power they can carry more troops with the trapper, its trapping time is its maximum trapping time is extended, and you know it just makes them stronger and better to use and more effective for getting max glory as you level them up. You can also expedite this. At the time I shoot, I recorded this clip. I didn't have too many timers to be able to expedite this, but you can if you click expedite. You can use as many timers as you have or want to use on that to finish it off. I also only recommend leveling up your Primarchs during the Primarch leveling event. So one of the other things I want to show you is about troops on your Primarch. Now once you transfer troops to your Primarch, you can't send them back to your barracks. But as you see here, I've got two Primarchs at the same castle. So I'm going to click on the castle and click on details or click on manage in this case and then I'm gonna click on the Primarchs and I'm gonna click on my team's list and I'm just gonna click on my trapper right here and click the transfer button and that brings this menu up and blocked by my face right now is my destroyer and I'm gonna select that and as you can see, this reverse button here will actually switch around that. I can switch between transferring from my trapper to my destroyer or my destroyer to my trapper. Either way I want to do it. 
but I want to send some troops from my trapper to my destroyer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this slide here to just slide it over to where I want about to be I could use the um, little text bar to make it exact then you click transfer and as you can see here they went to they're now on my destroyer another thing you can do so you're not wasting troops is you can if you've got a Primarch at your home castle that's summoned and you want to replace it with a different one like right now I've got my taunter summoned but at my level I'm not really able to use it effectively so I'd rather have my seizure so I'm gonna click on the taunter and click on train up at the top of that circle menu and Again, the research tree opens and I'm gonna select the seizure and I'm gonna click on summon And when I do that, it's gonna ask me if I want to summon my seizure to replace my taunter. And I'm gonna click on yes and What will happen is all of the troops that were on my taunter will now be on my seizure as soon as it's summoned now I can let it wait for the hour that it takes to summon it or I can expedite it which at this point during that clip I was able to so I did and that's a good way to keep troops from being wasted or having thinking that you have to go kill off one Primarch before you can summon a new one as long as you're at your home castle you can always summon a different Primarch so now one of the last things and the last thing that I'm going to show you today is how to properly use your trapper and if you're going to a castle raid or you're defending a castle being able to use your trapper properly is important now if you're defending your castle you're going to want to be trapping the seizures which I'll show you right now if you're going to attack a castle you're really gonna be wanting to focus on the taunters that are at that castle and trapping those so I'm gonna move over to this castle right here and there's a seizure there and I'm gonna click on the castle and I'm gonna click on the details button which will open the list if we were at an owned castle I'd also have to click on the Primarch menu but I'm gonna click on the enemy team and I'm going to it's gonna drop down the list of Primarchs that are there on that team and you can see because I've got my trapper there I've got the option to attack trap and trap um, and then if you look over to the left of that, you can also see the player's information and their status. If I click on that info button, that'll pop up and it'll tell me that their status is normal. So then I'm going to trap them. As long as their status is normal, you can trap them. And if I look at their status again now, you can see that they're trapped for 43 seconds. Now that's primarily because I don't have a lot of troops on my trapper at this point in time but it's just for demonstration, demonstration purposes right now. Um, if I were in a battle and I saw a taunter that had been trapped for 43 seconds and there was another one that was still untrapped, had the normal status, I'd want to go and trap that normal one so that all of the taunters are locked down. And as you check them, you're gonna see ones that look like this where they're still trapped, but they're only trapped for a few seconds longer. That's one where you're going to wanna to work with your team and have good communication so that you trap that one next and then your other players will trap the other ones so that you can keep all of those taunters locked down and all of the bigger players on your team are able to hit hit around them and in fact all of the players on your team are able to hit around those taunters once they're trapped so it's really one of those things that's very important to both offensive and defensive planning and if you look right now you can see I just tried to trap this Primarch again but I can't do it because the abilities in cooldown and this is why you really want to carry a decent number of troops with you because you don't start getting a decent trapping time until you've got at least about 5,000 troops or more on you. And your cooldown time though is going to be around one to three minutes depending on the level of your Primarch. And when you're in cooldown, you can't trap it. So if you've got 
two or three players working in a team and you trap it one time and as your trap's coming to an end, got about nine, 10 seconds left, your teammate traps it next. And then while theirs is in, got about nine, 10 seconds left, yours is coming out of cooldown and you can trap it again and you can just keep that Primark locked down. It's really the best way to use the trappers, especially when you're a low level player in Atlas. It is very beneficial to have those trappers locking down the taunters in an offensive raid and the siegers in a defensive raid. They really come in handy in both situations and no matter what your level is, you can really use those taunters effectively. So I highly recommend, well, the trappers effectively, sorry about that. So I highly recommend the trappers be researched by every player. They should be the first one you research after you've finished leveling up your fighter to level five. And the other ones, like I said, the taunter is good at really high level players with really strong bases. The Sieger and the Destroyer are both really good attack Primarchs. They're good for most levels. The Sieger, I have been told, is more effective for higher levels than it is for lower levels, but it's still the Sieger and the Destroyer are going to give you your max glory the easiest way because they're the easiest to match up the defense and attack power to. Um, so I really hope this helped you today. Thank you guys for watching and please stay tuned for the next one and have, have a happy time hunting in Atlas guys.